Hello, everyone. In this particular video, we're going to talk about uh, the use of chromium reagents in the oxidation of alcohols. Uh, one of the more traditional classic chromium reagent that's used is chromic acid, H2CrO4. Uh, chromic acid can be synthesized in situ. This can be synthesized from chromium trioxide or sodium dichromate. Then chromium trioxide or sodium dichromate is treated with aqueous acid. So this could be sulfuric acid with water, okay? Uh, with aqueous acid, they generate chromium trioxide. So chromium trioxide is suitable for, for oxidizing both primary and secondary alcohols, okay? For both primary and secondary alcohols. For primary alcohols, these are first oxidized. Okay, so we'll write H2CrO4 or alternatively, like you might see chromium trioxide with sulfuric acid and water written. But what you have to realize is this combination here is going to generate chromium, chromic acid for you, which is the active oxidant then, okay? So primary alcohols under these conditions, they are oxidized into the aldehyde, which is the first oxidation, but the oxidation reaction does not stop here. Uh, the chromic acid is a strong oxidizing agent, so the oxidation reaction does not stop here. In fact, uh, you cannot really isolate this aldehyde, and the aldehyde is further oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So what you're able to isolate or synthesize is really the carboxylic acid. So primary alcohols, would be oxidized all the way to the corresponding carboxylic acid. And now you want to note, note the connection here, your alpha carbon here in the primary alcohol, this is what becomes the C double bond O. And in some sense, the hydroxyl stays. So the alpha carbon is your acyl carbon. Uh, that carbon is called the acyl carbon of the carboxylic acid. Okay, uh, for secondary alcohols under similar conditions, secondary alcohol, any secondary alcohol under similar conditions using the chromic acid, it is oxidized to the corresponding ketone. And the reaction, as we know, is going to stop here because secondary alcohols cannot be oxidized further. So what is the mechanism of this reaction? Let's look at that. And we'll use the secondary alcohol as an example. So the mechanism of oxidation using chromic acid. So it is proposed that this reaction involves two steps. The first step is the formation of what's called a chromic ester. So the alcohol reacts with chromic acid to give a chromate ester. A chromate ester, which then gives you the ketone plus the reduced chromium oxide. So we look at the details, okay? So you first make an intermediate, which is the chromate ester, and that undergoes the reduction to the ketone, uh, specifically if you're starting from a secondary alcohol. I'm using the example of a secondary alcohol to look at the mechanism here. 
So if we start with a secondary alcohol and we have chromic acid, this here is the structure of chromic acid. And remember all of this is undergoing, okay, all of this is happening under acidic conditions because we're not starting with the chromic acid per se, we're using chromium trioxide or maybe sodium dichromate with some acid to do this reaction. So all of this is happening under acidic conditions. So the alcohol reacts with the chromium trioxide and uh, the alcohol can attack uh, the, chrome, uh, the, the chromium here. Uh, but under, uh, so this is the chromic acid, but under acidic conditions, uh, uh, it is very likely that uh, the chromic acid is in a protonated form, okay? It's in a protonated state. So the alcohol can go and attack the chromium here, and this double bond is going to open up simultaneously. This is going to give us the first intermediate where we have the chromium now with three hydroxyl groups. And we have the alcohol connected to that as well. So the oxygen of the alcohol is bound to the chromium center here. Okay. Now, from this point, since we are under acidic conditions, some water can come and deprotonate that hydrogen or deprotonate the alcohol hydrogen to give us a new intermediate where the chromium now has three hydroxyl groups. and the alcohol is attached. Now from here, one of these hydroxyl groups, okay, either one of these hydroxyl groups on the chromium, this can get protonated. One of them can get protonated because again, we are under acidic conditions and in principle, any of the oxygens can get protonated. But when, of the, but when one of the hydroxyl groups get protonated, okay, because all oxygens here, they have lone pairs to them. So in principle, you're going to have some equilibrium here where there are several protonated species. But when one of these hydroxyl groups gets protonated, right, uh, which is one of the possibilities here, that will get protonated, we will get an intermediate from where we can then generate uh, the chromate ester. That's going to lead us to the chromate ester intermediate. So we get to this intermediate here. And from here, one of the other hydroxyl groups that can come back in to leave, uh, to make that water leave, because that's a good leaving group now. So either one of the hydroxyl groups, okay? One of them might come back in and the water is going to leave. So this will give a chromium with now two double bond O's or oxo, groups, one of them, and in fact, uh, let me keep it at the same place uh, to maintain some consistency here. So we'll get to an intermediate like this, and we'll have one hydroxyl group, and we have the alcohol group that's attached. And, and a lot of this actually is happening under equilibrium. Okay. there will be species. These species would all be under equilibrium. Okay. So that means these reactions are going forward and backward simultaneously. So once we get here again, we can use a water molecule because we are under aqueous conditions here to deprotonate this 
and the electrons go back to that oxygen so that we get chromium double bond O, OH, and they have the ester. So this species here, this is what's called the chromate ester. That's the chromate ester. So that's just the first step, the formation of the chromate ester. Now from this chromate ester, this is when the hydrogen, the alpha hydrogen is deprotonated. So from here, a molecule of water can come and deprotonate that alpha hydrogen. And when that happens, the electrons from this bond go to the space between the carbon and the oxygen. And electrons would go back to the chromium, which would then push away one of those carbon oxygen bonds. So what we will get in the end here is going to be a chromium species. That oxygen has lone pairs to it. Uh, I've drawn them separately. You could just show it in one step. That's fine. Uh, so we'll get the OH here. And along with this, we will have the ketone product. So that's how we synthesize or we get the ketone product here. We have the oxidation of a secondary alcohol. So the secondary alcohol that we started with is converted into a ketone intermediate. And you get a reduced chromium oxide here, like I mentioned, okay? So the initial chromium that we start out with, this chromium here, that chromium is in a plus six oxidation state. Uh, when you calculate the oxidation state for the chromium in the chromic acid, okay, I'm referring to the chromic acid here. It is in the plus six oxidation state. And when you calculate the oxidation state of chromium in this intermediate here, this is now in a plus four oxidation state. So the chromium has gained two electrons. So it is getting reduced. And that's basically the principle of an oxidation, uh, redu reduction oxidation reaction. If there's one species that's getting oxidized, there must be another species that gets concomitantly reduced, okay? So in our particular example, the secondary alcohol is getting oxidized to the ketone and the chromic acid gets reduced to the uh, to a reduced chromium species. That chromium gets reduced, okay? So that's the mechanism of uh, oxidation using chromic acid. Now, one drawback of this uh, method, just a synthetic drawback is that, as we saw earlier with primary alcohols, you cannot stop at uh, the aldehyde. It will take you all the way to the carboxylic acid. So there's another chromium reagent that is useful for oxidizing uh, primary alcohols to aldehydes, okay? It will oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes and it will actually stop at that point. That reagent is pyridinium chlorochromate. It is abbreviated as PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. And this reagent is used typically, typically used in dichloromethane as solvent, okay? And the important thing about this reagent is that primary alcohols can now be converted into aldehydes without any overoxidation. So if we start with a primary alcohol, it will be oxidized with PCC in dichloromethane, the primary alcohol can be oxidized 
to the corresponding aldehyde and you can actually stop the reaction here or the reaction actually stops here. There is no over oxidation to the corresponding carboxylic acid. If you use a secondary alcohol, a secondary alcohol with PCC would still be oxidized to the corresponding ketone. Okay, so the secondary alcohol will be oxidized to the ketone uh, product here. Now the pyridinium chlorochromate is a chromium-based oxidant, as I mentioned, and the structure of this molecule has a pyridinium ion, which is a protonated pyridine along with a chromium ion. like that. So that's the pyridinium chlorochromate. And this is synthesized by reacting chromium trioxide with pyridine and HCl, hydrochloric acid. So that combination gives you the pyridinium chlorochromate, which is then used for these oxidation. And it is a milder oxidant, like I mentioned, uh, because it can do a selective oxidation of primary alcohol to the aldehyde molecule. Let's look at two quick examples, okay, how we write down products here. So if you look at the oxidation of a primary alcohol, a primary alcohol, when it is reacted with PCC in dichloromethane as a solvent, it would be converted into the corresponding aldehyde. So notice how the alpha carbon here, which was connected to the hydroxyl group, is now converted into that carbon oxygen double bond, and it gives rise to that aldehyde product. Similarly, when a secondary alcohol is reacted with PCC, using dichloromethane as a solvent, it is converted into the corresponding ketone. So those are two examples. And overall, uh, we've discussed the use of chromium reagents for oxidizing alcohols. Chromic acid is a stronger oxidizing agent. It converts alcohols to carboxylic acids. That's a complete oxidation of alcohols. PCC, on the other hand, is a milder and selective oxidant. It would convert primary alcohols into aldehydes. Now, chromium reagents traditionally uh, have been used traditionally, and these are toxic and corrosive. So synthetic chemists have developed uh, new reagents that are milder and, and are less harmful. Uh, and we will be looking at some of these reagents in the upcoming videos. Bye.